In this section, I will look at configuring and monitoring printer services. Up until Windows Server 2008, not much has changed in printing since Windows NT. Windows Server 2008 adds some additional tools to make administration of your printers in an enterprise a lot easier. In this video, I will first look at the terminology used by Microsoft when discussing printers. Some of the terminology that Microsoft uses is a little bit different than what you might expect. Next, I will look at how to install a local printer. Once you have a printer installed, you may want to set some permissions on your printer. This will determine who has access to the printer, but if you have users that need extra priority, in other words, their jobs need to be printed first, you can change the printer's priority and also availability times. Next, I'll look at printer pooling. Printer pooling is used when you have multiple printers of the same type and they all work as one. Next, I'll look at the new print management tool in Windows Server 2008. This tool makes managing your printers in an enterprise a lot easier. Finally, I will look at how to deploy printers in group policy. It is important to understand how printing works as it is a fundamental service in most companies. You will find that if your print server stops working, your end users will complain very quickly. To understand how printing works in Windows, it helps to understand a little terminology first. So first, Microsoft does not call a printer a printer. Microsoft calls a printer a print device. Think of the print device as being the physical printer or the device the paper comes out of. Microsoft instead refers to a printer as the software that communicates with the print device. Depending on where the software is installed will determine if the printer is a local printer or a network printer. A local printer will have the printing software installed on the local computer. A network printer will have the software installed on another computer. Note, however, the term local and network printer are in relation to where the software is installed that runs the print device. The physical printer could be connected by a parallel cable, USB, or even connected to the network. Consider this example. If the computer shown had printer drivers installed locally on the computer, it could print directly to the print device. This would be an example of a local printer. The print queue and software are installed locally on the computer. You can see that regardless of how the data is sent to the printer, whether it be through a cable, wireless, or via a physical network, since the printer software is installed on the local computer, it is considered to be a local printer. If the printer were to be moved to a server, remember printer referring to the software that connects to the print device, the client would then need to connect to the server to print. The server would then communicate with the printer. This could again be over a network or directly attached to the server. When the clients connect to a server like this, the printer is considered to be a network printer. If you were logged onto the server and were to print something, since the printer is installed on the local server, this would be considered a local printer. Think of it this way. When you print something, ask yourself this question. Is the printer software on your computer or on another computer? If the printer software is installed locally, it is a local printer. If the printer software is installed on another computer, then the printer is a network printer. Just remember, whether it is a local or a network printer has nothing to do with what type of printer it is or how it is connected. Now let's have a look at how to install a printer on Windows Server 2008. To install a local printer, open the control panel from the start menu. Once in the control panel, select the option Hardware. From inside Hardware, you have the option Add a Printer. If I select this, this will launch the Add Printer wizard. Since the printer I am connecting to is attached locally, I will select the option add a local printer. If the printer were connected to the network, I could use the second option. The second option will also automatically search for printers on the network and in Active Directory. 
Next, I need to select the port the printer is connected to. You can also create a new port. If the printer is on the network, you may need to create a new port in order to connect to it. In this case, my printer is connected to the parallel port, so all I need to do is press Next. On the next screen, you need to select the type of printer. Windows comes with a lot of printer drivers, so with any luck, your printer will already be listed. It is important to select the correct driver to go with your printer, otherwise, when you print, you may get unexpected results. In my case, my printer is listed. However, if it is not listed, and I was able to download it from the manufacturer's website, I could press the button and select Have Disk and browse to the drivers. Some of the printer drivers are also available on Windows Update. If you press this button, Windows will download the drivers from Windows Update if they are available. On the next screen, you can enter in a printer name. By default, Windows will use the type of printer for the printer name, but you can change this to anything you want. Windows will now install the printer to the local computer. The process usually does not take too long. On the next screen, you can share your printer with other users on the network. Remember, I just created a local printer. When users on the network connect to my printer over the network, they are connecting to a network printer. When I share printers, I like to give them a simple name which has nothing to do with the printer. On large networks, given enough time, every printer on the network will be replaced. Imagine if your company decided to stop using a particular company's printers and replace them with a different manufacturer. Even just changing the model from MX850 in this example to a higher model will mean the printer name will change. For these reasons, I like to change the share name to something more general. So if the printer does change one day, the end user will not have to reinstall the printer to keep printing to a printer name that is incorrect. It is generally a good idea to fill in the location and comment fields. When users are browsing for printers, these comments help them determine which printer they should install. The printer is now installed. If you wish, you can print a test page to test the new printer, or just press Finish. If I select Devices and Printers inside the control panel, Windows will show me all the printers that are installed on that server. If I select My Printer, right-click on it, I can then select the option Printer Properties. If you are installing a printer on a network, it is important to spend some time setting the printer up to avoid having to troubleshoot problems later on. Notice on this printer, the page size has defaulted to letter. If this printer is being used in the United States, this setting is probably OK. If the printer is being used in another country, however, you may need to change this. If this printer is in a country that primarily uses A4 paper, this setting can cause a lot of calls to your help desk. If I select the Sharing tab, you will notice I have the option to render print jobs on the client computer. If you switch this option off, the jobs will be rendered on this computer. Rendering jobs locally can put a lot of load on the CPU and memory, and depending on the job, may mean more data needs to be transferred over the network. If the client's computer has a low hardware spec, you may consider switching this option off so the jobs will render on the faster local computer. I would recommend in most cases to leave it ticked. The next option, List in the Directory, will list this printer in Active Directory. End users will be able to search Active Directory for printers and find this printer if you select this option. If I select the option Additional Drivers, I can install additional print drivers for this computer. These drivers will not be used by this computer, but when another computer on the network connects to this printer, they may not have the current drivers installed. If you install the drivers here, the client can download the driver from this computer and install them. If you don't make the driver available here, the computer will prompt the user for a driver and they will not be able to print until the driver is installed. If I select the option x86, I can install drivers for computers that are 32-bit. When sharing printers, 
it pays to install additional printer drivers and will reduce the number of help desk calls that you receive. On the Ports tab, you can select which port the printer will communicate over. For example, if you change the printer from LPT1 to USB, you can select the USB port in here rather than reinstalling the printer. On large networks with many printers, I have often changed printers to a different port when the printer has failed. If you have another printer on the network that is near the failed printer and is the same type, you can select that port and redirect the print jobs there until the other printer is fixed. Make sure that if you change the port to another printer, the other printer supports the same driver, otherwise unexpected results may occur. On the Advanced tab, you can select how documents will be spooled. Spooling is the process of taking a document that is being printed and copying it into a temporary location on the hard disk. By default, spooling is enabled. Spooling allows the application to finish printing faster and start doing something else. If you select the option Start Printing After Last Page is Spooled, this means that no pages will be printed until the complete print job has been transferred to the spooler. If you have a large photocopier that has network printing capabilities, you may want to connect this to the network. Photocopiers like these have very fast printing time. If you have a user that prints a very graphically intense document, for example, a large PDF file with a lot of diagrams in it, the computer may take a long time to render and print the document. If this is happening quite a lot, you may want to enable this option. This option will start printing the job after the last page has spooled. Imagine a 50-page document that takes 10 minutes to spool. Without this option on, the printer is jammed up for 10 minutes, printing only 50 pages. Photocopiers, especially with fast printing times, could print this document in less than a minute. It is generally better to make one user wait an extra minute for a document than make everyone else that uses the printer wait 10 minutes before any of their documents are printed. The next option, Start Printing Immediately, will start printing as soon as there is enough data in the spooler to do so. The advantage of this option is that while the job is spooling, Windows is contacting the printer and getting it warmed up so it is ready to print the job. If you are printing a lot of smaller jobs on the printer, this option works really well as it means there are no delays from when the job is printed and when the printer starts receiving the job. Just remember, if one user decides to print a really large job that takes a long time to spool, no one else will be able to print until that job is completed. The next option, Print Directly to the Printer, will cause the client to send the job directly to the printer and bypass the spooler altogether. It is not recommended that you use this option. What this means is that two clients could print to the same printer at the same time. Even though the printer will only print one document at a time, there is no control over whose document will print next. If you have a lot of large print jobs and your server does not have enough disk space to store the job in the spooler, you may want to switch this option on. I would recommend leaving this option off whenever possible. If you tick the option Hold Mismatched Documents, this will hold any documents the printer thinks are not configured correctly or the settings are wrong. This occurs when a client prints to the printer with the wrong printer driver or the wrong paper size. If the printer detects these kinds of problems, the job is not printed. The next option, Print Spooled Documents First, means regardless of the other options, documents that have finished spooling will be sent straight through to the printer. The next option, Keep Printed Documents, will keep a copy of all documents that are printed on this printer. If you print a lot of documents, this can quickly fill up your server hard disk, so keep this in mind before you tick it. If you have a document that is printed out a lot, this is a good option to switch on. With this option on, you can find the document that you want printed out again and reprint it. The last option enables advanced printing features. This includes things such as duplex and booklet printing. 
you should leave this option on and only switch it off for troubleshooting reasons. Whenever I install a printer and share it out, I like to go in and set the printing defaults. These are the defaults that will be used when the printer is configured to be used on a remote computer. These settings can be changed by the end user. One common setting you will find switched on is grayscale printing. This forces the printer to print in black and white by default. If the user decides they want to print in color, they can change the preferences on their local computer to print in color. Another setting I like to change is the default paper size. If you are using letter, it is fine to leave it on the default. But if you are supporting a site that uses A4, it is a good idea to change the paper to A4 like this. If I now exit out of the printer properties, you can see my printer. If I double click on it, the printer will open, showing any jobs that are currently waiting to be printed or are being printed. From here, you can also delete and restart jobs if you need to, assuming you have permission to do so. This brings us to the next part of the course, print permissions. Printer permissions determine what you can do and cannot do on a printer. There are three basic permissions for any printer. First, there is the print permission. With the print permission, you can print, delete, and pause your own print jobs. You basically have access over your own print jobs and no one else's. Next, you have the permission manage printers. This allows you to change settings and permissions on the printer. The last permission is manage documents. With Manage Documents, you can manage documents on the printer that are not yours. This means you can delete a job that was not printed by you or pause a job not created by you. This gives you manual control over print jobs, but there are some other settings that you can also set to control the way jobs are printed. If you want more control over the time jobs are printed and the order, you can set times when the printers are available and also the priority. Remember that one printer has only one set of settings. To get different settings, set up multiple printers with the settings that you require. In some cases, you will want to set up priorities on the printers. Priorities are used to determine whose job will print first. Once you have set up multiple printers for the same print device, set different priorities for the different printers to control the priority of jobs. The printer with the highest priority always prints first. Once this printer has run out of jobs, the printer with the next highest printer priority will print next. To give you a real-world example of this, a company I worked with had a photocopier that was capable of printing color. The color jobs would often take longer to print than the black and white jobs. The management wanted the black and white jobs to print first. To do this, I created two printers, one with a black and white driver, the other with a color driver. The black and white printer I gave a higher priority. This meant that black and white jobs were always processed before the often slower color jobs. Another feature with Windows printing is being able to configure the printer's availability. For example, if you want to set up outside hours printing, you would set up one printer available all the time and another that is only available outside hours. When a job is received by the outside hours printer, the job will sit in the spooler for that printer until the printer is allowed to print. These kinds of printers are often set up for large batch jobs. If you want to introduce some redundancy into your network, you may want to consider using printer pooling. Printer pooling allows multiple printers to work as one. When a client prints to the print server, the server can then send the print job to one of the many pool printers. The print server will consider the load of the printers when deciding to which printer to send the job. To use printer pooling, all the printers must use the same print driver. It is best to use identical printers when possible, but in some cases, as long as the printers in the pool support the same printer driver, you can use printer pooling.
remember that the user will have no control over which printer the print job comes out of. So, when setting up printer pooling, it is best to make sure that the physical printers are near each other. Let's go back to our Windows Server 2008 computer and have a look at the last few basic print features. First of all, I will look at printer spooling. Regardless of how many physical printers you have in your printer pool, you still only need one printer set up on your server. If I want to enable printer pooling for this printer, I need to go into the properties for that printer and then go to the Ports tab. On the Ports tab, I need to select the option Enable Printer Pooling. Once enabled, I can select multiple ports. Each port I select will be connected to a different physical printer. In this case, since I have selected three ports, there will be three physical printers in this printer pool. If one of the printers were to fail, Windows will stop sending jobs to that printer and send the jobs to the other two. On the Advanced tab, you can select the times the printer will be available. In this case, I will set the printer up to only print at nighttime. After you have set up the times to print, normally what you do is set up another printer to print without any time restrictions. When the end user wants to print something and have it available the next morning, they will use the outside hours printer. If they want to print something right now, they would use another printer that does not have any availability times set. On this tab, you can also set the priority. Remember, in order to use priorities, you must have multiple printers defined for the same physical printer. If I only have the one printer configured, all users that print to that printer will get the same priority and everyone's jobs will be printed first in, first out. On the Security tab, you can define the security for the printer. Notice the three types of permissions, Print, Manage Printers, and Manage Documents. You just need to tick Allow for the choices you want, but notice also there is a Deny option. The Deny option should be used in very rare cases. If the user is in a group that has a Deny tick, then regardless of any other group they are in, they will be denied access. One common example of this is when you deny the domain user's group access to a resource. You later realize that domain administrators can't access the resource. Why? Well, because the domain administrators have also been made members of the domain users group. If you want to deny access to someone to a resource, try unticking it first and see if that has the effect that you are after. If I exit out of the printer and select the option Print Server Properties, I can change the settings that affect the whole server. If you need to create additional forms, you can do it from the Forms tab. On the Port tab, you can add additional ports and make changes to the existing ones. In most cases, you will create the ports when you create the printer. On the Drivers tab, you can see all the printer drivers that are currently installed on the server. It is a good idea if you have old printer drivers that are no longer in use to go in here and remove those printer drivers. If I press the Properties button, I can see all the files that this printer driver is using. You can also see the path to where the files for the drivers are located. If I now go to the Advanced screen, I can change the spool directory for the server. If you decide to change the location of the spool directory, make sure the hard disk you are changing it to has enough free space to hold all of your waiting print jobs. If you want to use the additional management features in Windows Server 2008, you will need to install the printing role. These additional features include migrating settings from one server to another, Unix printing, internet printing, and enterprise management for your printers. If you have a large network over many sites with many printers, you will definitely want to take a look at what this role can do for you. Let's take a look at how to install and use this role in Windows Server 2008. 
To install the Print Services role, open Server Manager, and then select Roles from the left-hand side, and then select Add Roles from the right-hand side. Once you are past the Welcome screen, select Print and Document Services. In Windows Server 2008, this role is simply called Print Services. Once you are past the Welcome screen for Print Services, you need to decide what components of Print Services you want to install. The Print Server component installs the Management Snap-in, which allows us to manage printers throughout our enterprise. The LPD service provides LPR services, which is common amongst Unix-based computers. If you are working in a mixed environment, you may need to install this component. The Internet Printing component creates a website which allows users to manage their print jobs from a website. The last component, Distributed Scan Server, is a new component to Windows Server 2008 Release 2 and is not included in Windows Server 2008. Distributed Scan Server allows your server to receive scanned documents from network scanners and pass them on to your users. In this particular case, I only want to look at printing, so I will accept the default component of Print Server and move on. Once I press Install, the Print Server component will install. The install is quite fast and should only take a minute or so. Once the install is complete, I can close Server Manager and then run Print Management from Administrative Tools under the Start menu. From the Print Management tool, I can expand down through Printer Services to the local printer server. The great thing with this tool is that you can add additional print servers. For example, I could select Add Remove Print Servers and add my own domain controller. Once I have added my domain controller, I can go back into the Print Management tool and see what printers are installed. If I right-click on Printers, I can add a printer to that server. If I cancel out of the Add Printer wizard, I can also manage drivers. If I select an existing driver, I can remove it from the server. When you start adding and removing a lot of printers from your server or upgrading their drivers, the old drivers can cause conflicts. If the printer driver is no longer being used, you are best off removing it. One new feature of Windows Server 2008 Release 2 is driver isolation. By default, the printer driver will run in the same process as the other printer drivers. If the printer driver were to become unstable, one buggy printer driver can cause printing problems with all the printers on your server. If your printer supports it, you can select Driver Isolated Mode and set the driver to run in its own process. From the Printer Management tool, you can also make changes to your forms and ports. You will find that pretty much all of the customization that you can perform when connected to the local server, you can do through the Print Management tool. If I select an existing printer from my domain controller, I can open the properties for that printer just like I can when I'm logged into the server. If I right-click on a print server, I have the option to export my printers to a file or import them from an existing file. This is great for disaster recovery or for migrating your existing printers. If I select the option Properties, I will be taken into the server properties for that print server. On the Advanced tab, you can set the location of the spool folder. For best performance, you should place the spool folder on a separate hard disk. In the server properties, you have the option to make changes to the drivers, ports, and forms. However, it is probably best to do this maintenance from the print management tool. Being an enterprise-wide tool, you can also get statistics from all your print servers. To do this, I can go to Custom Filters and select the filter All Printers. Under All Printers, I can see all the printers that are installed on my print servers. If I select All Drivers filter, I can see all the print drivers installed on all my print servers. If you have problematic print drivers and you need to upgrade, 
it is a great view to ensure that all your print servers have upgraded drivers. The filter, Printers Not Ready, is a great filter to see which printers currently are experiencing problems. For example, they have a paper jam or are out of paper. The last filter shows the jobs that are currently printing on all your print servers. If you want to add your own filter, you can right click on Custom Filter and select the option Add New Printer Filter. For this example, I will create a filter that shows how many printers have more than 10 jobs waiting. If there are that many jobs waiting in the queue, there is possibly something wrong with the printer. Also, notice the tick box display the total number of items next to the name of the filter. When this is ticked, the number of printers that have more than 10 jobs waiting will be displayed next to the custom filter. On the next screen, you need to set the criteria the filter will work from. It is worthwhile to take the time to look at all the different criteria you can filter on. This is quite a comprehensive list. The custom filter can also be used as a reporting tool. For example, just say I want to know how many printers were using a particular driver. I could create a custom filter that shows me all the printers that use that particular driver. Once I decide on my criteria, I can make a decision if I want to set up any notifications. First, you can send an email to an administrator or another user. You can also choose to run a script when the event happens. Once I finish the wizard, you will notice my custom filter has appeared with a zero after it, indicating that there are currently no printer queues with more than 10 jobs waiting. Right down at the bottom, you have deployed printers. Any printer listed here is a printer that has been deployed via group policy. To deploy a printer using group policy, all I need to do is select the printer, right click it, and then select Deploy with Group Policy. You could, of course, set up printers by using the Group Policy Management tool, but it is more convenient to do it from Print Management. To add a printer to an existing Group Policy, select the Browse button and then select your Group Policy. This tool can only modify existing Group Policies, so if you need to create a new Group Policy, you need to go through Group Policy Management. Next, I need to decide if I want to deploy the printer via the user settings in the group policy or the computer settings or both. As soon as I press the Add button, the printer will be added to group policy and deployed to the user. If you are planning to deploy printers through group policy, there are a few things you need to take into account. Printers that are deployed through group policy are deployed as connection objects. This means the printer must already exist. You cannot create the group policy and then create the printer later. Since the printer is deployed as a connection, you can change the printer settings at any time. Remember though, printer deployment via group policy requires Windows Vista, Windows 7, or Windows Server 2008. You also need to update the schema before you can deploy printers via group policy. If you are able to meet all these requirements, it is well worth the time deploying printers via group policy. In summary, remember, the high priority printers get their jobs printed first, but also remember priorities only work if you have more than one printer per print device. Once you set up your printers, use permissions to determine who can print to which printer. When troubleshooting printer problems, a lot of problems can be solved by simply restarting the printer spooler. Restarting the printer spooler often frees up stuck jobs. Understanding printing is a fundamental service on most networks and often is the first service end users complain about when it stops working.